And we're back with another episode of the Lakers Fast Break Podcast. Gerald Glassford, come right back at you here from Lakers Fast Break, Pop Culture Cosmos, Inside Sports Fantasy Football, and of course, also as well, Symblades. Symblades with a Y.com for Joe Soro. He is Ox1947 at LakersBall.com. Please go ahead and support all the great things that we do, including the Lakers nightcap. You could go ahead and catch after every single Lakers game. Also as well, of course, the great things that we do with Playback, playback.tv slash Lakers Fast Break. Go ahead and make sure you're part of that or part of our simulcast as well. Truly appreciate you joining us for that. Plus also as well, of course, our good friends, John Costa. Hopefully you got a chance to check out his great stuff that he did the other day on this channel. Plus also as well, of course, go ahead and check out his regular channels, Lakers Talk. Clutch Shock and Lakers Corner. Go ahead and make sure you're every bit a part of that as well. Our good friends, Empire Jeff TV, Lakers in 5, John McKaylee and Channel, and Daniel Berry Sports Highlights. Yo, go ahead and make sure you're a part of that by subscribing today. And speaking of subscribing, liking and following, wherever you're at, whether it's YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, please go ahead and follow us. Subscribe today to get the latest notifications on when we go live on the air with the latest Lakers Fast Break podcast. Well, again, coming off a terrible loss against the Sacramento Kings puts us squarely in the ninth place position right now in the Western Conference. And as you look at the standings, the Lakers, after tonight's action, there are two games behind the Dallas Mavericks, now two games behind fully as far as in the loss column as well in the Western Conference, and there are two and a half games behind the Phoenix Suns. That still means, though, that they're in the playing position with the Golden State Warriors, a game behind the Lakers, needing two more wins to catch up to the Lakers, but still, with a victory on Saturday, Against the Lakers, that would be a very problematic thing for the Lakers and would probably look like with the ease of schedule that the Golden State Warriors have over the Lakers would probably put them in the driver's seat for the ninth place spot, which is the question for today. With the playoffs, as far as the first six contenders, probably out of reach after last night's debacle, two losses against the Kings in a week probably put them out of the mix for the top six. Where does that leave the Lakers as far as seven through 10? Back again for another play and run. Does this mean that deja vu will happen all over again? Does this mean Groundhog Day will happen all over again for the Lakers? That's the question we're going to go ahead and talk about today. And here today to do just that is the Master of optimism himself, because I have a feeling I already know what he's going to say. It is, of course, a good man indeed. Please go ahead and check him out today as Ox1947 at LakersBall.com. And, of course, also as well, he owns a company he works very hard at, and that is Symblades. Symblades with a Y.com. In fact, he's got it right there on the shirt. A little bit. Oh, yeah, it's right there. You can barely see it right there. Yeah, yeah, it's right there. Oh, my gosh. It is, of course. A man who I was supposed to meet earlier today and I unfortunately got rescheduled so we can come back home a little earlier to Vegas, who I was told I will have to go ahead and make up for, and which I will do with all the crew that's in Southern California for the Lakers Fast Break in this summer when I go ahead and come back again to Cali. It is Joe Sorrell. And Joe, great to have you here, my friend. Again, apologies about earlier today. We'll go ahead and make up for it. I can feeling in my bones already it was great seeing you in person finally though we'll always cherish it and we'll always go ahead and make sure that uh, we mention that constantly throughout the years on this show but it's good to have you here my friend after last night's terrible loss where lebron ad and also as well d'angelo russell didn't show up on either end of the floor <sighs> very frustrating because this topsy turvy, ups and down, up and down roller coaster ride for the Lakers doesn't look like it's going to stop. But for the Lakers' positioning, it doesn't look like it's going to be anything other than a play in for the Lakers this season. 
Yeah, play in that's likely going to need two wins to get out of it into a spot only to probably end up playing Denver in the first round. That's the that's the worry with the current standings. It's it's not <clears throat> they have to go on an unprecedented run here and it has to start with winning the next four games. Uh then they have six games on the road that they're going to have to win likely five out of the six. And then the remaining four games, well, I think it might be five. Let me look at the schedule real quick. Sorry. Um, yeah, maybe five would be three at home again and then the last two road games to finish the season. They're going to need to – they're going to need to make a, a, a run somewhere that's – not unprecedented for this season. Otherwise, they're going to get stuck at the 9 or the 10, and then they're playing for an 8 to just play Denver in the first round. And if that happens, folks, it's going to be a short playoff series, 4 and 5, and then the Lakers are going to have to make a decision on what they want to do with, in my in my view, the worst coach in the NBA. Do you, I mean, there was things that we could address as far as his coaching, which we did address. I did in short bursts. You and John Costa did more in last night's game. And yes, it was a lousy performance by our top three players as far as on the scoring sheets. But there was some coaching mistakes made there, especially on the defensive end, Joe. And that's something I think that the Lakers look at. If the Lakers don't make another playoff run like they did last year, I think they can attribute it to the defensive side of the ball because it's really been not anywhere near, even after the trade deadline last year. Last year, they went on that 18 and 8 run based primarily off their defense. This year is not the same story, my friend. Yeah, the, the defense since the, I believe, since the All Star break is second to last. So they've actually gotten worse on defense since the All-Star break. And their their offense did well. And up until uh, Mike Brown took Darvin Ham and put him in his pocket for 48 minutes. It was quite embarrassing when, when I went back and watched the game a little bit more. It was you, – you got to the point where we're not the only ones that are frustrated. Uh, I believe in D'Angelo Russell – uh, the decision to stay or leave is going to be up to whether they bring back Darvin Ham. Even if the Lakers want him, that's going to be a challenge now if there's a team out there that wants to drop $20 million for four years, let's say. Now, there's some discussion out there that we're, over, we're overvaluing D'Angelo Russell again. Uh, and there's some truth to that because it is a contract year and D'Angelo does have the habit of getting uh, – Well, like a lot of players, like a lot of players, uh, they get their, they yeah. work hard to get that contract. Once they get that contract, it's not the same story. Yeah, and that that would probably be that would probably be. Uh, I'm, I'm trying not to be. I like I like the Angel Russell, but I think dropping twenty mil per for him uh, that would be a problem uh, if if he doesn't show up for you know those years. And there's there's a better chance of that happening in a lot of cases than not, unless he go unless he goes to Charlotte or something where he can do what he needs to do. But the issue right now is not just on Darvin Ham, even though he's a big part of it. It's uh, the Kings put a blueprint together that this, that teams are going to start using here the rest of the way. Which means if LeBron decides to be lazy like he was last night. And if AD continues to play like trash against bigs that have skills, then all you got to do is sick a second defender on D'Angelo to keep him from going nuts, and everyone else is going to fall apart. Now, the other thing that Darvin Ham didn't do is he didn't go with the hot hand again. He didn't go. He didn't continue to get the ball to Austin Reeves, who had 11 of the first 13 points in the game. He didn't keep going to, with Rui, who was on his way to having a possibly a career year, career game. These are the things that frustrate any coherent basketball fan of their of their team. Why? Why? I know why. He doesn't know how to coach. 
He does it. It's 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 sad to say that someone's been in the NBA as a player and an assistant coach as long as he has, and he doesn't know how to coach. And I can't figure out why. Why doesn't he know how to do the basic things? It's it, You're going to say that because they're not playing hard enough? Is that what it is? Well, aren't, isn't it your job to make sure your team is ready and motivated? If you're not able to do that, I know it's difficult in the NBA, especially when you have someone like LeBron James. LeBron James, we've talked about if, if he had had a top coach, how different would his career be? Well, a lot of that is LeBron James's fault. He never allowed a coach to be great. He always had issues with coaches. The only coach he ever liked is Greg Popovich. But I guarantee you, if Greg Popovich lambasted him in practice in front of everybody, if he was a spur or whatever, he probably would have not liked him too. LeBron is LeBron. AD is AD. Well, I, I at this point, the fractured team is fractured in all directions. Uh, I'd say the most disappointing part last night, besides Darvin Ham, was the fact that we had to witness a, I guess, a, a, what's the word I'm looking for here? Display of futility. Let's, let's just use that phrase. By Anthony Davis versus the three best big men in the NBA when they're healthy, of course. So Joel Embiid, Nikola Jokic, and dominating AD Sabonis. Sabonis is 10 and 0 against Anthony Davis. Embiid is 7 and 1. Jokic is 7 and 0 the last 7 games he's played against AD. What does that add up to? 24 and 1. Oh, I should say 1 and 24. AD has lost 24 of the last 25 games against those three bigs. That's not bad. That's atrocious. So you combine that and you combine the second worst defense in the NBA and you combine the fact that the Lakers, in my eyes, I know there's probably another one, someone in Detroit, someone in Washington, no, Washington doesn't have any talent. Detroit doesn't have any talent. None of those teams have two all stars on it that are in that are viable, right? Darvin Ham is the worst coach in the NBA out of the thirty teams, and I'll take that to the bank. So, second worst defense. Your main cog, who's supposed to be your anchor, has only won one game against the elite centers, and he's supposed to be an elite big. Yeah, he might not be a center. But he's an elite big. And don't tell me that, oh, well, he's not a center. He can't do that. No, BS, okay? Tim Duncan, I watched Tim Duncan in a series dominate Shaq, okay? Don't tell me that a power forward can't dominate a center if he's really skilled and wants it. So with that, AD, if you've got a big, you're done. It's not an accident that the Sacramento Kings and, and the Denver Nuggets continue to beat down on the Lakers over and over and over again because the main guy on this won't play up to their level. And then just bad decisions, bad mojo, not enough depth. It's it's uh it's just not it's just not gonna work. And the future is bleak because I don't really have a lot of confidence in management to turn this around. Uh, LeBron James recorded himself listening to R&B mu music on a freeway. That's your leader. That's that's the response to losing last night. Him recording himself thinking he's Al Pacino in heat, driving at night with music. Could have been worse. Could have watched his son only put up three points as the USC Trojans only scored even 49 points. He could even break 50 against the Arizona team that they beat last week. So need I digress on that. But once again, it is the Lakers fast break. It is Joe Soro along with me, Gerald Glassford. Thanks so much for watching this thing. Truly appreciate it. Xbox, thank you so much for the super chat. Truly appreciate it. 
No, Joe and I didn't meet at Knockout Pizza. My fam wanted to get here earlier. Something came up as far as for my wife's work. Unfortunately, he had to come up a little bit sooner uh, than we had anticipated. But I did tell Joe and I did tell Jamie that during the summer, and as Kurt said, I've warned them already that uh, we will be getting together for a weekend to map out things for next season's uh, LFB. So I will be making a run, hopefully, to uh, the Knockout Pizza in Carlsbad or somewhere similar or some if you have other suggestions jaron i will go ahead and try to get you squared away and we'll go ahead and even up on that one but i do do appreciate it and hopefully we can meet some of you guys out there in the southern california area next time i'm down there would love to go ahead and have the opportunity to but i did meet joe in person though uh and we had a great lunch at lucille's a couple days ago so that was a really fun time indeed but it is a lakers fast break it is, of course, Joe Soro, along with me, Gerald Glassford. Thanks so much for watching and listening. Truly appreciate it. Don't forget, Saturday, 5.30, of course, we're going to have everything going on with the simulcast, playback.tv, slash Lakers Fast Break, postgame, and Joe Soro's nightcap for the Lakers and the Golden State Warriors. And, of course, guess who's coming back to practice on Friday? No, it's not Gabe Vincent. Not yet, anyways. No, it's not Jared Vanderbilt. Not yet, anyways. It's going to be Steph Curry for the Golden State Warriors. And, uh, of course, that means he'll be back on Friday, Joe. So, with that said and done, it looks like at this point, Joe, we need to worry about a plan. To what spot? It's beginning more and more with the kind of uh, difference and buffer between the Mavs, Suns, and us. It's going to be ninth or 10th place. And with the way the schedule looks out, Joe, we mentioned, of course, the four home games that we have. After that, we do have some uh, easier Eastern Conference teams. But even if that's the case, the Golden State Warriors still have an easier schedule than we do schedule, schedule record-wise. So with all that said and done, and Curry coming back to the lineup on Saturday, most likely, still going to be ninth place for us in another run similar to what we had last year. Similar run to finish the season? To finish the season. Or I don't know about that far as far as getting to the Their Western defense is light years worse than last year. Their, their uh, schedule is light years harder than last year. Yeah. James is a year older. AD is a year more cowardly in big games. And Darvin Ham is a worse coach than he was last year. So the answer is they're going to have to find whatever lily flower somewhere. I don't even know if that makes any sense, but that I guess I'm trying to say that they're soft. Uh, have to find something out of that that's a little harder. That's going to be a, it's a mentally weak team led by mentally weak uh, leadership. They're, they're a bunch of pussies. I, I mean, I don't know. There's not, there's, I, know <laughs> I love how you just... I'm babbling right, right now in. because I can't really say what I want to say. They are a bunch of freaking pansies. They have no freaking balls. Nothing. Even if you're injured or hurt, at least have something. You know... David Goggins has no knees left. If you don't know who David Goggins is, look him up on YouTube. You'll find out. Okay? He has no knees left. He's still running 28 miles a day. You want to be the greatest, LeBron James, yet you're driving at night in the middle of nowhere for what? And broadcasting it. Why? What does that have to do with anything? Like, why do I need to see that? Why do I need to hear about your son scoring three points? in college when I don't give a flying rats behind. What does that have to do with the Lakers? If you want to go be a basketball dad, retire and get the F out of here then. I don't give a shit. I don't care about any of this. I'm so sick of just I don't want I don't want to go on a diatribe about how much I can't stand people sometimes because it's not fair. There's a lot of people in here that I don't know that I, I do like, but 
I just I don't I don't have patience anymore for nonsense. Uh, and that happens when you get older. That's why you become more ornery. That's why everything gets worse because you start to learn the nonsense. When you're a young kid, you kind of take it in stride. You don't know any better. But watching guys that are making fifty and sixty million dollars a year not be able to do do, do the, and, and have this kind of talent, not be able to do at least the basics. You know, Dirk Nowitzki, poor guy, man. You know, Dirk Nowitzki used to play his ass off, and he lost, and he lost, and he lost. He won an MVP and lost in the first round, but he was playing his ass off. And he never, ever showed any kind of non-leadership in those things, in those runs. I, and, and if there was ever a time in my life where I was happy for someone, even though it meant my team losing, it was Dirk Nowitzki in 2011. The run he made with not, without really having a second star on the team, just really good players. Jason Kidd had been past his prime at that point. I don't count him as a star on that, on that team. Tyson Chandler wasn't necessarily a star. He was a very good player. Jason Terry, good player. The fact that he ran through Kobe, even though Kobe had no cartilage in his knee at that point, but he ran through Kobe in a sweep. He beat the, the super team in Miami and, and that he beat the Spurs. So I even when he was losing, you always saw something there. You always saw him trying. But sometimes I don't see that here. You just don't see it. Now what's going to happen? They come in, they beat the Golden State Warriors on Saturday. Now we're pom-poms and look. Le- Le- LeBron drops 30 and 15 is the greatest thing since sliced bread. Yeah, we'll probably be very happy with that. But the overall story here, folks, is going to be the ending. The ending is going to be that the Lakers are not winning a championship this year when that's all there is at this point. If you're going to keep AD and LeBron and run this thing and you're not winning championships, then there's no point of squeezing that terry cloth anymore. There's no more water in it. So they, the Lakers and the the Lakers management need to make a decision on whether they want to win championships or wipe their ass with the LeBron history, notoriety, whatever the hell that is. I was just mentioning that uh, as far as what I saw with the Kobe statue and the grammatical errors that are on it, it was just whoever did it, I bet you, bet you money that they just copied and pasted from the original box score from NBA.com because it, it just, it just right there because it's it all in that matter, box. Uh, Gerald, it doesn't it's matter. Bad. It's bad. Yeah. No, it's bad. It's bad. You, Absolutely. As, and this is the thing that surprises me. Okay. It, it, this team, even the management is bipolar. When they came out with the, I believe it's the Walter K. Brown trophy which is what used to be the stanley cup version of the nba championship they used to pass that to the to the new champion like they did in hockey in the nhl they 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 created the wk brown trophy to commemorate the five nba championships in minneapolis and the championship in 1972 for the lakers because the the uh the O'Brien, the Larry O'Brien Trophy wasn't instituted until 1975. The first team to win it was the 75 Warriors. So from then on, that was what the trophy is. Before then, it was the, the Stanley Cup version of the NBA. They did that and made a really beautiful trophy, you know, gave credit to all those teams, all six of those teams that won it. Then he had beautiful banners, five of the Minneapolis Laker banners, and then they redid the 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 LA Laker banners and I mean and then of course the the jerseys were, were were reconfigured as well and you go there and I saw it when I went to the Pagasol uh retirement uh jersey retirement uh ceremony I'm sitting there like this was great what you did whoever did this freaking knew exactly what they were doing then you go to Kobe statue and it was completely butchered not Jose, just the writing, Jose not just, Calderson. Not just the writing. It was. It was. It's the statue itself. Yeah. Kobe's arm looks like it's about a foot too long. His face looks like it melted. 
It's not even this. It's not even his the same head. Now, was this a DEI hire? Someone had mentioned that, by the way. That wasn't my thing. I thought I started to laugh. Who hired this guy? Were they trying to meet a quota? Were they trying to save money? <sighs> Got to go walk that line, don't you? Always. Always walking that line. And it's just a bad job. So whoever, I, I would imagine my guess is that whoever created that many years ago in the first place and typed it up there for the final stats on that box score screwed up you know originally and then you you laugh and you, and you put your hand over your face and always and then, and, and then you wonder why tv shows video game execs movies why have they sucked lately I'm about talent. Why do I get irritated when I keep hearing about somebody's kid who's not good enough? What is this? Charity now? This isn't a YMCA. Let's pick the, the guy that wants to play a little bit more because he can have a chance to play, okay? I'm about talent. I don't give a rat's behind about any of that other garbage. And that's why this is the way it is. It's that mentality. I'm about talent, okay? If I'm going to hire someone for any job, I want talented people. Talent. If you're forced to hire someone who's not talented, go play a tape of Dana White when someone tries to tell him what to do. That's what you should be saying. And I'm not particularly a big Dana White fan. I think he's obnoxious. But there are times where when someone tries to come up on you and tell you how to run your business, you, that's what you need to tell them. And there's not enough of that. There isn't enough of that. I want talented people doing stuff. I do not want anyone that is supposed to be there to be there. And if that's wrong, then you can go, you know what, yourself. I don't give a damn. I just don't give a damn. I really, really don't. I'm, I'm not just saying that to be a tough guy. I'm not saying it to be all, all, I'm sitting in my own little room here. It's easy for me to say it, man. You want to go outside and you want to run something? You want me to run something? Let me, let, me, let me put together a team. Let me put together the team and you'll see the talent. And by the way, if, it's, if I can't find the talent, which that happens too, guess who's going to do it? You know why? I don't got problems at home. I don't have shitty friends. I don't have family members that are dinglings. I have a happy marriage. My kids have the utmost respect for all of their elders and all of the authority figures, whether it's their teachers, whether it's their dance instructors, whether it's us, whether it's their grandfather, their grandmother, their uncles, their aunts, all this stuff. That is what matters. That's foundation. That is fundamental. When you do that the right way, everything else builds correctly. When you get off it, you entitle grown children. You entitle children. You entitle lackluster, weak, stupid people. You get what's going on in the world right now. And the Lakers are the microcosm of that. They are the microcosm of that. If you don't want to do the job, sell the team. If you don't want to hire a GM that knows what he's doing, sell the team. If Rob Polinka wants to hide in a rabbit hole somewhere or a shithole, he should go back to being an agent and let somebody else do the job here. Once again, it is the Lakers fast break. It's a snack pack for you. It's Gerald Glassford along with me. Well, I said me, Gerald Glassford along with Joe Soro, a.k.a. Ox1947 at LakersBall.com. Also, go ahead and make sure you check out what he's doing, of course, at Simblades, Simblades with a Y.com. So, Joe, it is looking more and more like with the two-game buffer, 16 games left, or fit less than that, I'm sorry, that the Lakers will 
probably be in ninth or 10th place in the Western Conference. And I share your lack of optimism as far as how far this team can go as compared to last year. Last year, there was a lot of momentum created by the Lakers after the trade deadline. Uh, things were looking a little bit better for them as far as, especially on the defensive end. We have still not, as you saw last night, solved our rebounding problems. Our perimeter defense is still absolutely putrid. Yeah, there's still lots of issues there. We are shooting better. I will give a, a, the team a lot of credit for that. They are shoot, shooting substantially better since the start of the season. They are. But still, when you're playing that bad a defense and you know the playoffs, defense is really what it comes down to for a lot of these teams. That's going to make all the difference in the world for the Lakers. And matchups you know, aside, the Lakers, obviously, they haven't played well against the Nuggets. They haven't played well against the Kings. It's going to be harder and harder to find the matchups that they can find to their liking coming up in the playoffs. Or the, even the play-in. Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's not... It, it is a matter of talent in some degree that D'Angelo and, and Austin, unfortunately, are not good defenders. Even if you did have good coaching and 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 a, maybe a a worthy bench, <laughs> uh, but then again, if you did have a worthy bench, let's say a Vando and Gabe Vincent, you could probably put those guys in in certain instances to help with defense. But they it's don't take a little more than that, unfortunately. But they don't. They don't. Again, it's uh, they're chasing a rabbit they're never going to catch. Unfortunately, that's just what it is. They're trying. Uh, I'll tell you who's trying. Rui's trying. D'Angelo's trying. AD is trying. He's just not good enough, apparently. Uh, LeBron is trying, but he's also trying to figure out how to not die, too. Shame. What else? What else? What else can be said? It's it's a it's a it's a it's as bipolar a a team as I've ever seen. You have admiration to certain things that certain players are doing, and then they also do things that equally suck. Equally suck. So you're watching. Let's. I'm, I'll use LeBron again as an example. LeBron will get to the basket. He'll dunk from the dotted line. He'll do all that, and then two plays later, he'll do a an entry pass straight to AD when the guy is all over him. Why? Why? Why does that happen? That's the, that's, that's the question. Why? Why are you going under screens, going over screens when you should be doing the other, the other way, depending on the situation, the other way around? Why does that keep happening? We didn't want the Kings in the paint. Why wouldn't you want them in the paint? These guys shoot the lights out of the freaking building. That made no sense to me. Were you worried about Sabonis scoring 40 points? So be it. Let him score two points. It's better than three. Instead, you leave Harrison Barnes, Murray. Fox didn't even have really like a dynamite dynamite game. Didn't have to. Murray and uh, Hell Bunk was not as good as he was when he was in L.A., but the way Sabonis played against, you know, Sabonis AD. looked like someone had mentioned this. I gotta, I don't, I don't know who it was, but I gotta give him credit at least. Sabonis is Jokic light. That's, that's, he looked like he wasn't even breaking a sweat. Honestly, I, I said this on the show after the game. He looked like he was barely moving. He barely had to move. It's quite embarrassing. If that's how he was going to play, AD has the athleticism to work around that, doesn't he? Yeah. But then he's got to have ganas. He's got to have desire to do it. He's got to want it. Really want it. But maybe the frustration of not being able to play well as a team, but that's still not an excuse. You're the leader. You, you lead the team. You make things better. The players on the court. Now, if the coach is putting you in positions that don't work, you're LeBron James, right? You're Mr. Greatest Player of All Time? Go go tell the coach. Coach, they're running 
they're running a, a, a trap on on D'Lo here. They're they're meeting our ball handler at the top of the key. They're making him uncomfortable to the point where they got to get into a pick and roll too early and too far away from the basket. Now what? Now how do you combat that? I didn't see a damn adjustment on that all game. AD, uh, D'Angelo Russell had one point going in the fourth quarter. One yeah. point from your starter who has been balling all, all year. Why wasn't there an adjustment made to that? Why? Why didn't you clear one area then if you're going to worry about someone coming up there? Throw it to, throw it to LeBron or, or have LeBron bring the ball up. If they want to trap him there, that'll free up D'Angelo then at that point. Like, I, I, I don't – I'm not going to sit here and coach the team on, on, on in some room. Seriously. I think a lot of you all are pretty bright and understanding how this works. Why isn't this happening? Why aren't these adjustments happening? Are the players stubborn and they're not doing it? I don't think so. Do they have to be told? LeBron is a genius, isn't he? Folks, how many times have we been told LeBron is a genius? Why isn't he adjusting? Why isn't he telling the team to adjust? I don't I don't get it. Reminds me a lot of earlier in the year when the Lakers couldn't shoot and they would throw other teams out their zones that would absolutely befuddle the Lakers and they just could never figure it out. And they just wouldn't know how to attack it and they would just, you know, deal with it. They would just put up terrible shots and there you go. Well, now the team shoots a lot better, but a lot of that is D'Angelo Russell. And like you're saying, it looks like teams, as what you saw with Sacramento, have caught on to it and have now made it harder for the Lakers to go ahead and have to adjust. And Darvin Ham has proven already that he's not good at making adjustments as of yet. As of yet. This is 67 games in. Don't think he'll ever will be, but again, I have to say for the record, as of yet. I don't know why they didn't adjust to that. All game long. I think I know why, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Because the game was somewhat close. Is that why? Before and he figured, the oh, quarter. these guys are having a bad game, but it's still kind of close. So that, that tells you right there that he's even worse than we're even saying. Oh, well, we got a five-point lead here, and then we'll adjust. They'll start making shots. If you're going to play off of this is what – he coaches like a fan, like a dumb fan. The, the fan that wants to trade every player every other day. Sorry, Tom. Um, that kind of mentality. He coaches like a dumb fan. I'm not, I'm not calling Tom dumb. I'm, that, 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 went, that came out wrong. Actually, there's smart people that do dumb things. I think Tom's trade stuff is kind of dumb, actually. I, I'm, I'm, I, can't, I can't deny that. He doesn't. He knows he gets close fine, for it. Fine. That's, that's fine. That makes sense then. Okay. Anyways. So, if you're going to coach this team like a fan, like, not, like what's what's some of the things he said this last day or so in response to? Well, wait till I tell you about the stuff with him and D'Lo. Yeah, D'Lo is, is I already know about it. I, well, let, I, me, let me just go ahead and I'll read it to the folks out there. Darvin Ham, according to Yovan Buha, to put this on Twitter. Darvin Ham says his relationship with D'Angelo Russell is in a great place. We have great conversations, Ham said. Great text exchanges after games. During the game, our in-game conversations, it's tough. That's why the phrase is called building a relationship. It didn't. Hit, it doesn't hit the ground running all the time smooth, trying to figure things out on the fly. And yeah, Dennis is someone I love and care about. Dennis is a hell of a player, but just try trying to learn low on the fly and figure things out. Then he added, then for him, to, I don't know why he said Dennis is a hell of a player, but just trying to learn low on the fly and figure things out. I just, it was weird how you he phrased that. So maybe he was talking about something else as far as, uh, no, it seemed to be all. Dennis Schroeder have to do with anything? It was, it was added on to the D-Lo conversation. So I don't know why he uh, added that. That was weird. 
Then for him, the beautiful thing about it, I think that our cause the difference in where we were then and when we are now is our ability to talk and be honest with one another and our ability to really take accountability with one another. It's two grown men both caring about winning, both trying to help one another figure things out and who both want to get to the level we know we can get to. But in terms of he and I, I think we're in a great place right now, Joe. I'm sure he would agree. I don't know what the dentist part was for in there. I don't know. Maybe he meant D'Lo. See, he's getting his hit point guards mixed up. The one he had before and the one he has now. Alan says no, but okay. No what? I, he's not getting it mixed up. So I don't just. That's off of uh, Jovan Buha from Twitter. So, In the article, Delos says Ham favors prior relationships, especially Dennis last year. So he's comparing his relationship to Dennis Schroeder from last year as, as compared to Delo this year, which is totally two different dynamics because it's totally two different individuals that you're dealing with as far as the coach is concerned. You should not treat each player the same way these are different people that would need to be treated differently in order to maximize their potential joe what the hell are you talking about what the hell is this a ted talk never mind joe what is this that you, you want inspirational quotes go go sit on tiktok all day and just swipe down I'm just telling you where, where does this garbage come from. Where do these people learn how to talk like this? He says he and do they D-Lo read a in book. A place. Do they study anything? The amount of horse shit that comes out of people's mouths, seriously, especially when they're in positions of power, terrible, absolutely asinine. Well, he's saying he's in a good place with D'Lo, is to basically summarize it, which you were talking about earlier. Think we're stupid? Good place where? What good place? Your team is 29th on defense since the All-Star break. What good place? You don't know how to adjust to a simple trap for 48 minutes. What the hell is this place you're talking about? Fantasyland? What? I don't understand where this kind of talk comes from. All these tough guys. I keep hearing these guys are all smart and tough. What does that even mean this day? What does it mean to be tough? And, hey, I came from somewhere where I, I, I got hard. No, you didn't. You actually got soft. When you get older, you're supposed to be stronger, like an oak tree. The longer the oak tree lives, the stronger it gets. The longer a redwood grows, it gets stronger, at least mentally. Instead, these guys all turn into tulips the older they get now. For what? To save your job? What are you worried about? You get fired, you're going to be able to work for free, for do nothing for two years. So what are you worried Ham, about? So if Ham stays and Dilo walks, gets another contract somewhere else. Is that the indication that they were not as tight as Darvin Ham? Well, I would appreciate if D'Angelo said something so you can put a stamp on it. I left because Darvin Ham was not conducive to my career. I... I'm not saying differently. You lose D'Lo for nothing. You are a stupid organization. Just like Stone said, trade this guy. You risk hit losing him for nothing now. It's bad coaching. It's bad GMing. It's bad ownership. It's a bad organization. It's, right? a, bad, it's a fractured organization. It fractured itself when they didn't have to. People that shouldn't be making decisions made decisions or played a big part in it to create this. 
because when you win, sometimes arrogance starts to creep in. Oh, I'm the we're the we're the guy. We're the shit. We can do what we want now. No. No. What did what did Tom Brady say when he came to championships? They asked him, "What's this? Uh, what's your favorite championship?" He goes, "The next one." And when uh, Julian Edelman, this is before he won his fourth fourth Super Bowl, when Julian Edelman asked him, well, "So you, you know, uh, we're chasing Montana?" He goes, "I'm not chasing Montana." He goes, "I'm chasing Jordan." You got to do. Who's the greatest football player of all time? It's, it's debatable, but and that other one is more debatable. Yeah, it's because not, this is too many positions. But yeah. he's the, the the best, right? At least quarterback. You want to be the best ever? Certain people the, truly look at those who were the greatest, who are dubbed the greatest. What did they do to be the greatest? Is it just getting points and playing a bunch of games? No. No. It, it helps, but it's the accomplishments. It's the big games. It's the ability to create results. The results in sports, if you want to be the greatest, I know it's not fair in some cases, but that's life. You have to win championships. You're measured by championships. And that's the bottom line. Ah, cool, bro. Cool, bro. Cool, bro. Cool, bro. Cool, bro. Ah. Cool, bro. Um, you need to be put on timeout for an uh, asinine comment like that, just, <laughs> just so you know. Seriously. Not, he, like, get a clue, bro, kid. He knows. Matt Stafford, he really? Just, he is not. He can't say that with. No, he's old player. enough to understand that. He on. knows that. He knows that. I was fifteen and I knew who the hell the best players were back. Yeah, then, back, yeah. back he that knows. Day. He yeah. cool bro's a smart kid. He knows that. He knows. He knows. He's just. He's just a, being a fanboy, literally. So yeah. He, come on, come on, cool bro. Come on. He might not. I don't even think he's Hall That's of Fame. That's a good one, Kurt. <laughs> <laughs> once again it is the lakers fast break it is joe Soro along with me gerald glassford thanks so much again for watching listening please if you're watching this channel every day please like and subscribe you owe it to us please we're begging you please go ahead and do it it really helps out the i'm not channel. begging by the way folks you guys oh. want to like and subscribe that's on you well please oh yeah you're I, don't a great beg, I don't beg for no one yeah, that's for sure. Yes, it is. Please do what you can to help us out here. You watch us every day, please. We'd love to have more likes. We'd love to get more attention to get more viewers out there, get us into a larger audience, get us in the spot where we need to be as the preeminent Lakers fast break show that we are and the preeminent Lakers podcast that we are as well. But Joe, uh, I heard it, you know, I was reading earlier in the chat saying that uh, the blame game that starts uh, seems to be more on LeBron for last night's game and less on Ham. Again, to me, it's more about shared distribution. Your top three players sucked last night. Your coach didn't make the adjustments necessary, kept on letting Murray check up threes like they were candy. Your organization, as far as the Rob not building you a team and a roster that has very little depth to speak of. It's not a good situation right now, Joe. And ninth place in the Western Conference may be the best that we're going to get. Uh, it, 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 it jumps back and forth. Some have more blame than others, but really it's a team. It's a team blame. It's an organizational failure. It's not just one one player or one coach or one executive that they all failed miserably the last few years because 
they didn't make the right decisions on roster for, for roster spots. They didn't make the right decisions on who to sign. They wasted away good players that they picked in, 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 in draft positions that normally don't produce that kind of talent. To me, I, I, I look at when you lose, when you lose players that you didn't have to sacrifice record your record to get it's almost worse than losing uh let's say a top five pick because you have that pick you know you don't a lot of times you don't have to do too much thinking to pick the top five player but when you start picking guys in the in the mid-teens and they're viable and they're all stars let's say or if you get someone in the second round that's a starter you get a free agent that's a starter that makes all NBA teams, first teams, you lose those. What's great about those players is they've been humbled. They're the humbled stars. And those are, those are the, the, that's the glue on, on, on good teams. But I just don't think the Lakers have the right leadership in those departments they don't have someone who knows who to keep and when and who to not keep this isn't like the nfl where there's a hard cap yes the nba does have a, a one and a two apron now but it's still a flexible it's still a flexible league in terms of salary they've let go of way too many or traded way too many players that they should have kept and they basically ruined all that scouting, all that money, all that observation, all that, all those needles in a haystack. They they pissed it all away when they didn't have to. It's disappointing, Joe, that we come around to this again. Uh, Lakers fighting for a play-in seed. You know, we thought things were going to be better for this team, but ultimately they haven't been. And and you know, a lot of the fingers. No, are going I'm, to be I'm not. I'm not going to say that. I, I I I I know the end here. We we come back after a few wins, and we're like, yeah, man, maybe they can. You know, they can do this it. This does not yeah. look like it's going to be a happy ending. No, it's zero chance. Zero. Even if they get out of the play, they got to play Denver in the first round because they're not going to get out of the nine or ten at this point. No, there's no way. Not. There's no way. They'd have to go on an unprecedented run. And until I see that, I'm not going to buy into it. So now, on top of the fact that you got to play two extra games to even get into the playoffs, so now you're playing 85 games this year, counting the championship uh, during the in-season tournament. 85 games to get an eight seed, only to get your ass beat by the champs. Yeah, does not look good. Does not look good for the home team. But well, we'll be back on Saturday if they win and say, "Yeah, AD's cool," and D'Angelo scored thirty points. Yeah, no, yeah. Well, I guess. I mean, we we've made play. enough observations at, to start seeing patterns. Patterns have already started forming where AD will go twenty-seven and twenty-five against Nas Reed, but against DeMontis Sabonis. It's not looking good, my friend. Not for a guy who's supposedly, you know, when you've been hearing all the shows and whatnot, will probably be, if everything falls right, because of the 65 game rule, he'll be the league's, uh, what, second all-team, most likely? Sure. Behind Jokic, that's where he'll, that's where he'll qualify. Has he played like a second team All NBA center? Sure. Against what twenty five uh, teams? There's five. What three to five? Well, Embiid is not going to make it. Sabonis is probably. Uh, if I was voting for, is is. If I'm voting for the the three All NBA teams, I'm putting Jokic at one, Sabonis at two, and, and AD at three. 
AD Seems at this fair. point. In that, but it's a, it's a positionless because they had to accommodate everyone. Yeah, yeah. Right? They had to give the certain guys, oh, well, I, I, I want to be on all NBA teams so I can get my super max so that I can complain about not being able to play. Why do I have to play so many games then? You, you have the goal to say that, I'm not saying you or the people in the chat room, but I've had people say, why do you got to be like that? I'm like, why do you got to be like that? $60 million and they're complaining about playing 82 games a year? Motherfucker, you better than, than take it, take it then. We've had this discussion before. You guys spoiled little jackasses. That's why. You want to make your money and not play as many games. Screw you, man. Seriously. That's an embarrassment. Somebody told me that. I'd be like, what are you, what are you nuts? It is disappointing. Uh, it just It's not disappointing. It's worse. It's, it's pathetic. And, and not enough people are saying it. Too many kiss asses. Too many soft, freaking, whining, garbage leaders. Leaderless trash. Every angle in every corner of the world, especially in sports. So, so let me ask you this, Joe, because you were the one last year that told me to get on that AD train when I said at that time, you know, with the Lakers you to get on not the AD train two years ago. Well, and I did, and I you told me that, and I said, well, maybe they should consider exploring trading him at that time. At that time, so I did. I got on the AD train with you. Two years later, flash forward, we see AD having dominant games, but when it comes up against the right matchup, he gets is the one that gets dominated. So, two years in, do you still think it's every bit as much of a good train to get on after? I think uh, I think there's a better chance of if you had a really good coach who knew how to use AD the right way. I think AD could flourish, but he's never really had a great coach that could bring something out of him. I think that that matters. You don't think Vogel could? I think Vogel brought out the best defensive player he's ever had out. AD, I know, I know that this 2017 season is considered his best season. 18, I, I believe, as well. There's I no like better 19, season. 20. There's there's no better season than 20, 2020. And I don't think it was a coincidence that that because he got injured in 2021 in the playoffs, that they faltered. Frank Vogel was the perfect coach for Anthony Davis. If he had Frank Vogel for 10 years, I'm positive that AD would be a two- or three-time defensive player of the year. That was – Vogel being handed AD was like Andy Reid being given Patrick Mahomes. It's the perfect player for that philosophy that they had. And just coincidentally, he had guys like Caruso. He turned Kuzma into a really good defender when he was struggling on offense. That's ACP, true. ACP, really good defender. Of course, Rondo helped a little bit too because he's nuts, which we all love Rondo because he's nuts. And for some weird reason, he turned into Ray Allen from three during that run. I don't I, – I, that this doesn't get discussed enough. He wasn't missing in game six. From three. It was freaking amazing. So are you hoping, because I know Stone said he would not like to see the OKC Thunder play the Lakers. You said you would like to see the OKC Thunder play the Lakers. So let's say the Lakers are fortunate enough to get out of the play-in and fall into the eighth seat and play the OKC Thunder. Then you'll be talking about a matchup in the second round against the Clippers and the Pelicans before you would have to meet the Denver Nuggets, if that worked out in the right way. But that's a very big F. I think it's irrelevant to discuss that. You don't even think they'll make it that far? The Lakers, if they get in, will get the eighth seed, and Denver will have the one. I just don't see how Denver is not going to be the number one seed. Because they're tied right now. That's all I have. Yeah, no, the Denver. Denver knows. Yeah, Denver knows. Denver knows that they can control the West, and then when they get to the finals, should they meet Boston, they're going to start in Boston for that one due to their records. But uh, 
you'll see them you'll see them wax the Celtics if they're healthy. That get that series will go five or six. The only reason why it'll go six is because Jason Tatum ended up going nuts on one of those games. Other than that, I don't see how anyone's going to beat Denver. A search got much respect for you, my friend, but it may still be bothering him, his shoulder. Who? But AD. But kind of looked good when he was getting 27, 25, three block shots and seven assists. So what was it? What was it the other 24 times then? Where he's one and twenty-four against the three bigs. Yeah. That's that's this, the problem. This isn't a singular issue. If it was one game off, yeah. Okay. He had a bad game against Sabonis. He's never beat Sabonis. You know how many games, ten games is? That's one eighth of the season. He's lost every game against Sabonis. And he's more talented than Sabonis. But there's something above here that's not clicking. Now, if you were to tell me that Sabonis is going to back him down because he's just too big, if Embiid's going to back him down because he's too big, if Jokic is going to back him up back, back him up because he's too big, how many times did I see Jokic get the ball at the elbow and still dominate? Sabonis was just sitting in the paint. Matter of fact, they didn't call that three-second, and I was that was actually pretty mad. R. Anthony said, uh, why do you keep saying Denver will be the one? Championship teams tend to rest their individuals near the end of the year, and overachieving teams like OKC and the Wolves seem to go for top spots. But who knows? Hmm. He's Denver, saying Denver younger teams... Last year. Denver was, yeah. But he's saying, why do you why are you saying Denver will be the number one seed in the Western Conference this year? Because they won it. They've won 10 of the last 11 games. You don't think they'll shut it shut it down, close the end of the year? And lose the one seed when they can get it in the next 15 games? Why would they shut it down now? The Western Conference is tougher than it is last year. No, it's not. Oklahoma no, you don't, you Minnesota think, being a top three uh, in the conference? You don't think the Western Conference is no, tougher? they got weaker. Uh, no, I disagree with you. I How? With you. Memphis was you a trust shell. Minnesota with that cat? Memphis was a shell of themselves. Okay. And Golden State? Come on. I'm not talking about the teams Lakers played. I'm talking about the Western Conference as a whole. No. They're not better than last year, in my opinion. <clears throat> I'm not scared of Oklahoma City. I'm not scared of Minnesota and the Clippers of the Clippers. Then what? Okay. Phoenix? Eh. Dallas? Eh. Only a Booker comes back. New Orleans? Eh. What's Booker going to do? The second he's in a big game, he's going to freaking flail like a dead fish. Guys, this is based off history. This isn't my opinion. You want to change my view on this? Change your shit. Stop telling me something is something when it's not. Is it that hard? Everyone's sitting there snickering. <laughs> What do you want me to tell you? I'm, 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 it's based off stuff I'm watching. I'm not sitting there going, ooh, I'm going to say something that is going to piss everybody off now. What's up, PMC? Just Joe being Joe. Once again, it is the Lakers fast break. It is Joe Sorrell along with me, Joe Glassford. Thanks so much for watching. It's truly appreciate it. Not a lot. It just, I, I, I thought last year's crop was better than this year. The Oklahoma I think it's, City's like, I think it's too slightly young. better. But that, that's Oklahoma it. City's too young. Minnesota is, I, I'm telling you, Carl Anthony Towns is probably going to miss the first round, which could be dangerous for them, especially if they play somebody like Phoenix. And then you got the Clippers. Is Kawhi going to last? Getting hurt already? Do you have a point? I don't know what to say anymore. What do you want me to tell you guys? Two weeks ago, all these teams were a lot healthier than they I'm going to say if everybody's healthy, right? Is that what you want me to say? Okay, let's just say if everyone is healthy. Sure. Yeah, it's better. But I'm basing off of what's going on. What about a team like Dallas, Frank's team? No, not enough. Not enough. 
Dave Luca and the, the Mary minimums. The irony of that is hilarious. So you don't think Luca Kyrie carry a team at all? When's when's Kyrie ever carried a team? When? Tell me. I'm just I'm just when saying. When has Kyrie Irving ever carried a team? He played Not great. He played he played great in 2016, sure. Yeah. He's a great player, sure. But would you say he carried him? I mean, LeBron James in 2016 in the finals, which is hilarious because I always laugh at this. They're like, oh, Kyrie saved LeBron when he hit that three towards the end. I go, LeBron had the most points, most rebounds, most assists, most steals, and most blocks for both teams in that seven-game series. Yet he was saved by a shot. Just like Steve Kerr saved Michael Jordan in 97, right? Or when Ron Artest saved Colby in 2010. The amount of stupidity and just like eye-gouging things that 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 people spew out of their shithole is it's 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 hilarious in a bad way. No, I don't think they're going to get to the Western Conference Finals. Oh, no. No, I don't. No. This no. team, no. This team is way too uneven. Way too uneven to go ahead and, and say with any confidence that this team will repeat the same kind of run that they had last year. Way too uneven. Yeah, they shoot better than last year's team, but their defense is a lot worse. And what... what is primarily played more during the period of the playoffs defense. Well, that's another good one, 805. Did Robert Ori save the Lakers in 02? Sure, for one game. That happens. It's a law of averages sometimes. You get a role player that hooks you up. For those of you who don't remember, the Bulls in the 92 finals – they were down, they were up 3-2 in Portland. I'm sorry, in Chicago. And they were down 15 going on the fourth. The Portland, Portland didn't lose their first 15-point lead in the fourth against the Lakers in 2000. It's actually in Portland. It's actually against Portland. Against the Bulls in 92. So guess what happened? For those of you who don't remember. I'll, I'll say it again. 90, 1992 NBA Finals, Game 6 in Chicago. The Bulls were down 15 going into the fourth quarter against the Portland Trailblazers. They sat Jordan down for six minutes. Pippen led them back. I think they were down maybe two or three. Then they put Jordan in and they ended up closing out the game. Now we're going to sit there and say, wow, it was Pippen who won that game. Therefore, Jordan is the best over ever, right? It's a team game, schmuckies. It's a team game. Sometimes great players have teammates that do stuff. That's how it works. You think Jordan can win a championship playing one on five? Kobe, LeBron? No. Get a freaking clue. You. I can't, I'm not going to say it. That's okay. You've already dropped seven S. Oh, no. I was going to say worse words, not just the S and A words. Okay. This would have been the show to do it. Okay. Uh, I wanted to ask you before we leave, uh, Search and Destroy said he's already hyped for the Dodgers. Are you hyped for the Dodgers this year? Hmm. No? No. <laughs> because of Dave Roberts or mm -hmm. because of the team? Mm -hmm. oh, because of Dave Roberts. Yeah. yeah. And oh. Kershaw's still on the roster. <laughs> It's like a, they've actually won a world championship with Kershaw on the roster. You realize that, don't you? Before. When you win 100 games four times and you don't win at least one championship in that time and you, you, you don't win because you play with your heart instead of your brain, I have no respect for you as a professional 
you've get, you've been given every chance to 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 have top notch teams. You're winning 111 games. You're winning 106, 104, 100 games, and you still can't get out of the first round three of those times. What are these and days? nothing is being done about it, and that's the part that bothers me. And uh, Bruce Bochy goes to Texas after their underachieving, underachieving team for years, no matter how much money they spent, and they won a World Series the first years there. What are you going to tell me? What do you want me to say? You think I don't know what the hell I'm talking about? Okay, fine. The results say different. You keep losing. You're, lo you're, you're. I'm talking about sports here, folks. You keep losing and making bad decisions. You're a loser in that position. You don't belong in that position. Why do you keep allowing this to happen? It's the same thing with this LeBron James thing or Mike Tomlin thing. Why are you telling me things that are not real and true when I watch the games? I'm there, folks. I'm watching the games. Don't tell me I don't know what I'm looking at because the results prove it. You want to go down the line? One World Series for Mr. Dave Roberts. Why did he win that World Series? Because Kevin Cash pulled a Dave Roberts. How iron ironic is that in 2020? Mike Tomlin, who's supposed to be the greatest coach in the NBA NFL. He's this great leader. Three playoff wins in 13 years. At half that time, he had a top five quarterback, the best running back for three years, and the best receiver for five years. Go ahead. Keep, keep, keep bringing it to me. LeBron is this smart Isaac Newton of basketball. Why? Because he tells us he is. And apparently all the bronze sexuals tell us. Yet when I see him do an entry pass straight into the opponent's gut, at least once a game, I'm going. For when he does a wraparound pass in the corner to Austin Reeves at a very difficult angle, that gets there. It's sometimes the simple passes that elude him. Is that what you're saying? Would you say you can tell the difference between a mistake and a continued bad decision? Yes. I'm going to use an analogy. You're really going to love this. Right, here we go. You ready, guys? It's going to get deep here. Can't wait. Someone who's unfaithful. Someone who's married, let's say. Has a significant other on the side for let's say five years, puts that person up in an apartment, buys them a car, buys them clothes, all this stuff. They get caught. And then what's the response usually after that? Oh, I made a mistake. You made a mistake for five years, every day, buying houses, buying cars, buying clothes for that person. Now, let's look at the other side, the mistake. You have too much to drink at a party. You say some words to someone, they say some words to you, all of a sudden you have a mistake night. You see the difference? Does that make sense? We're all human. We make mistakes. Get it? But what's the difference between a mistake and bad decision-making? It's this big. It's There's a difference. Once again, it is the Lakers fast break. It is uh, analogies and story time with Joe Sorrell and <laughs> Cheryl Glassford. Thanks so much for watching this thing. Truly appreciate it. Um, interesting, that would be cool, bro. And I'll leave it at that on your comment up there. <laughs> Game of five. Oh, my gosh. This is going in a direction I'm not sure I'd like to go in. <laughs> Yeah, but it is, of course, Joe Soro. Joe, my friend, uh, looking forward to whatever we can talk about tomorrow because I know more Lakers stuff will always come up. But it has been a roller coaster of the season. Unfortunately, the Lakers, they're in a spot not very enviable with a whole lot of teams they lo they're looking up at and not a whole a bunch of time left. And 
Of course, we do have four straight home games. Do you see four straight home wins coming up for them? Uh, three and one seems to be popping into my head. Okay. Yeah, three and one. Uh, Even though they, they'll, like you said, be the matchups, favored in all The matchups four. with these four teams are pretty good. The Lakers match up very well with all four teams. Yeah. So I'd say three and one is probably likely. Four and oh, they ever needed to win four in a row, this is the time. Yeah. Because that six game road trip is going to be a butt kicker. With two of the, with actually four games uh, involved, two back to backs. It's bad. It's a bad road trip. It's worse than the Grammy trip, especially this late in the season. Whoever did the schedule for the Lakers really stuck it to them. Probably the same person that uh, copied and pasted that box score on Kobe's statue. Good one. <laughs> So, so funny no one, no one no one wanted to offend anybody, probably, right? In December, I, I took pictures. You know what it is? You know what it's like? I'll use another analogy. Actually, that's not technically true. We we say that wrong. Analogies. Comparison is really the really the word. It's it's like someone who writes an email with grammatical errors, but you don't want to tell them that they spelled 10 words wrong when it's supposed to be spelled correctly. <laughs> Blood out. Very funny. So I did go there. I did go and take my picture with the Kobe statue and all. We, you know, saw the typos and all that. So funny, Joe, because I went in December to take pictures with the other statues that were there. Nobody there. Nobody visiting. Nobody taking pictures. Just middle of the afternoon. Nobody actually caring at all about the statues at that point in time. You go yesterday with Kobe. There's a line waiting just to take a picture of him. And of course, ever the opportunistic society that we are, several street vendors are literally right there selling mm, kind of uh, grayish Kobe merchandise as far as it's concerned. And of course, Lakers merchandise, that's probably not official in any sense, but kind of interesting how that happens, Joe. And Kobe statue there, people show up. I don't know. I don't have an answer to that. Just thought I'd mention it. It's just kind of weird how things are with the Explain city of Los Angeles. Explain why affair. it's weird. Yeah. It's the city of it's the love affair that they have with Kobe. Is that what is that all you meant on that? I don't, I don't buy it. You want to is. say something else? No, that's I'll keep it that. I yeah. won't use I won't use any uh how should I say uh what are you afraid of? Luptious affair what analogy. are you afraid of? Yeah. That's okay. What is, what is everyone afraid of when they're talking? Gerald, next Joe nightcap, name it bedtime story with Joe to mess with him. Cool, bro. Yeah. Messing with Joe is not, not good. It's not good for my long-term health. It drives me nuts anyways. I have to answer all the emails and comments about how this guy doesn't know this. This guy doesn't know that. He doesn't know this. He said this. Uh, but they're, and conversely, there are dozens and dozens of comments and letters that say how much they love Joe and love everything that he does. So props to you, my friend. Props to you on that. Darren says, I know Inglewood and that ain't it. Serge says, uh, well, thank you. Very kind words, Serge. Very kind indeed. And again, it was great to meet Joe finally in person. Uh, I, again, uh, we'll be trying to do something. I will try to see if I can go ahead and visit uh, Knockout Pizza in Carlsbad next time I am in the area. I will make it a mission to do so. And then I will make it a mission to go ahead and meet with the guys. In, you know, Because Jamie, Jamie was asking me when I was outside the forum. He was calling, man, come down. about half, I'm just about a half hour down in Santa Monica, man. Come down. It's like, man, I can't. I guess stay here near the forum. They're having a concert. Got my girls there. Having fun while I'm at the Scissors parking lot. By the way, Scissors is still good, by the way. I know you don't like it, but Scissors is still good. Mm. And I had Lucha Libre on the go this morning. That kicked ass. I'll leave it at that. That's a fascinating story, Gerald. Yes. 
safer than yours. Your analogy. I'll leave it at that. Safer. Safer. Yes. What do you what do you live in a box? You watch Disney all day? The Disney Channel? No. You don't know how the real world works? You don't go on Instagram and see all those skanks on there? You that you, you feel like that that's not what's going on? No, you could just go for Twitch for that. Twitch. That's why we can't. That's why we don't have an audience on Twitch because they're too busy watching. Maybe maybe that. I should just go open an OnlyFans site too while I'm at it. We've told you that, and a cameo. There you go. You could shut down Sinblades with all the money you'd make from that. Hmm. Curtis Ferris Sizzlers, the restaurant chain. It's good. You'd like it if you go. But Lucha Libre. Best, best food there. Best food in San Diego, in my opinion. Although Joe has mentioned some good places as well. So, yeah. I will no. end Joe if he does that. Go to go, go to OnlyFans. Okay, guys, explain this to me. I, I I can honestly say this with all of my might. Here we go. I've never gone on OnlyFans. Is it only for people to do? Porn garbage stuff. stuff on it or there's is there a pot like is there somebody cooking on there or something that's we don't is know it, this is it just we don't know we don't know it's only fans skanking it up is that all it is okay is it am i talking to myself Joe says, what are you afraid, afraid of? of when referencing speaking your mind? I hear him, but some people have different sensibilities in class. But do you, but do you Joe, seems you have stands. I have yeah. sensibilities. But sometimes you got to turn the volume up because people react to the, to the volume going up. It's Xbox says it's for fetishes and other stuff. So that's all they do on there. There's no uh, this normal stuff. Celebrities talking about their makeup or whatever. Maybe you would be the first. Rants on command. I'm not a celebrity. You could be on OnlyFans. Why the hell would anyone want to watch me on some tube putting makeup on or whatever? No, you would rant. About whatever. About what? That's what this show's for. <laughs> I told you guys, I, this is my life outside this is very good. I have nothing to rant about outside this. He is telling the truth on that. <laughs> Everything is a cause and effect in my life. When I get angry, it's because something created it. I don't go walking around because I had a bad day. I don't have bad days. I Kurt have... says John Cena had an OnlyFans, non adult. A surprise. Another revenue stream for Simplates. How? What am I going to do? Put turf in, on my wear turf uh, created underwear? Like I don't, I don't know what the hell I would do on 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 a site like that. Oh, Kurt says Cena was promoting Ricky Stenicky. <laughs> Cena. Who's Ricky Stenicky? That's his latest comedy uh, that's on. It's him with uh, him and uh, Zach. Uh, forget his last name. Um, the one that I heard. It's on, uh, it's on Amazon Prime. Drea DeMeo. She uh, she played uh, Adriana La Serva on The Sopranos. Apparently, there was a big news that she had an OnlyFans site. It paid. She said it paid her rent or her mortgage. She was broke. Apparently, what what is she, was she just getting naked on there? Anyone, yeah, uh, think, from what I, I hear, we, that's what you usually have to do you know, on, on those OF sites. <laughs> that's a good one. I'll give cool bro that one. That's a pretty funny one. <laughs> Mowing the lawn. <laughs> Mowing what lawn? <laughs> My lawn doesn't Kurt, mow. Kurt says she paid off her mortgage the first day. Okay, but what does she do? She got naked. That would be my guess, Joe. The only wife beaters I ever wore were the black ones. The white ones, not really my thing. Serge, we 
we lost our soul a long time ago. You know, you know, we go off on on tangents. Not always good tangents. Yes. <laughs> Search. Give us a topic that makes you happy. Because he likes it when we stay on top. He's straight and narrow. He more than know, more than not more than I. I know it's it's tough, guys. We can't make everybody happy. Some people like the tangents. Some people don't. Some people like me. Some people don't. No one likes Gerald. Some people do. It's just what it is. Let's ask Master Yoda. But, yeah, Master. Master Yoda. Who's Master Yoda? Let's talk about these. You know he's a Star Wars nut. No, I meant who's the who's Master Yoda? Like, are you meaning like Master Yoda? Let him have an only fan channel. Yeah, well, we have a couple more days here to marinate in this uh, Laker path of destruction. You got to admit, Serge, we're trying to find some sort of entertainment to cheer you guys up in the time where the Lakers are not having the greatest of seasons. So you got to find things. I, look, it's <sighs> losing makes you go crazy especially when it's done in a, in a terrible way. I did our Anthony. I did uh, quite a bit uh, up until uh, my early 30s. What'd you do? Uh, play basketball religiously. Oh, nice. Yeah. I, w I played a hardcore. Yes. Really? Yes. Uh, especially when I lived in Southern California, I was uh, I was that kind of one of those guys always looking for uh pickup. Did you games. wear knee braces and elbow no. pads and shit? No. Slowed me. We slowed me down. Advance. No. Losing creates the rants. I don't handle losing very well. That's what we can tell. Lose losing festers and never goes away. Once again, it is the Lakers fast break. Joe and I will hopefully be on tomorrow for another scintillating conversation uh, as best we can. But uh, Saturday, of course, Golden State Warriors, Los Angeles Lakers, and of course, all the great timing in the world. Stephen Curry misses the Mavericks game yesterday, and of course they lose. But he magically should be back for Saturday's game. Any thoughts on that? Are, are you worried more about Golden State with or without Curry? Because they've been 4-2 four, four and two without Curry this season. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Lakers beat Golden State with or without him okay. on a normal basis. Last one wasn't a good one, but that, that they were due. They were due a, a win like that. I think the Lakers should win Saturday. That's the what? game I think they should win. When did you stop playing basketball? Me? Yeah. I have never stopped. I just don't okay. play as much as I used to. All right. Golf, basketball. If I had a choice, I'd play them at least once a week. Golf, you could play probably two or three times a, a week if you're probably not having to work as much. Basketball, you, you do need to go play with people. That was a little tougher. It's easier to play golf than basketball. Search and destroy. Great to have you here always. Uh, thank you so much for everything you did uh, for the chat room. Best Lakers chat room that's out there. Hopefully you will have a good rest of your evening and a good rest of your Friday as well. But Joe, any last thoughts before we head on out? I think I've thought enough tonight. Yes, you have. Yes, you have indeed. Kubro says, hey, Gerald, say, no, I won't. Uh, no, I will not. Uh, that's, yeah. No. What? He wants you to say S-I-R-I -I so that it will go off on everybody's S-I-R-I's out there. Yeah. Yeah. Once again, it is the Lakers fast break. It is Joe Sor along with me, Joe Glassford. Uh, cool, bro. Silence is golden. <laughs> did, you, did you hear that? Oh, what did I play in my prime? Uh, usually forward or center. Uh, yeah, high school, that's what I usually played, although I handled the ball a lot uh, as far as because uh, I could dribble really well and pass really, really well. Um, and I played uh, excellent defender and rebounder. 
uh, shooting was my not so friendly thing from the outside. So I realized early on, I had to find other ways to go ahead and make contributions to the team. Joe, what's your uh, best power attribute? Forward. I was always a power, power forward. I was down on the post. I, was there ever a doubt? I was, uh, I'd love the turnaround jumper. That was my thing. Yeah, I know, Cobra, but I'm not going to say it. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to say I, it. And I used to remember when it, it's it's tough for skinnier guys to, to play against someone like me because I, I don't feel contact, but they do, and that would help out. Yeah. It's just, it just, that's what it was. I, I just, I wish I had a better vertical. I think that's the one thing I wish. Oh, yeah. D don't we all? The vertical was, I wish, uh, I wish, I remember I, I was, I did some exercises to help my vertical. I had shin splints for a week after the first workout. I couldn't move. Never did them again. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what we should set up an OnlyFans for, or one on one live stream, or let's say a, a no, because then you'd have to be naked playing basketball <laughs> with your balls going everywhere. Get the whole FB crew, LFB crew. Let's we'll see what we can uh, it, it, play a game, pick up game. There's a new meaning to let's ball out. It's funny. Kurt, uh, my special move on basketball, uh, in basketball, on the court, was uh, – dribbling and uh, making a move like magic johnson where you fake going into the key like you're passing it off to somebody else they'd have their head turned and then you go up for an easy layup or you then make another pass to someone else so joe what is your what was your special move on the court elbows headbutts turn around jumper turn around jumper. Right. i'm impressed but both you and I just needed more vertical. Yeah, I wish. I, I wish needed I... to grow taller is what I needed to grow. I needed to grow up taller. Uh, in terms of basketball, yeah. Uh, it would have been nice to Because you and I were 6'2", six, 6'3". Six, you need to be. If I was 6'7", six, 6'8", six, there would have been a whole different lifestyle for sure. But I think it would be insulting to so many people around me if I said I wish I was taller than 6'3". Because <laughs> everybody around me is like 5'6", 5'7", 5'8", 5'9". I'll take it. I'll take it. Before the drugs and all the candy. Here. If, if okay. I had... If I could imagine myself a particular player, I would like to think if, let's say, if I was 6'7", 6'8", 6'8", let's say 6'8". I, I could have seen myself play very similarly to, to Charles Barkley. And, and Charles Barkley uh, uh, doesn't get enough credit for his freakish ability. I mean, I know a lot of it is God-given, but there's no reason for a 6'6 player to be that strong and skilled. Barkley was a true freak of nature. Cool, bro. You have to practice your threes a lot. These guys in the NBA take what uh, in practice a thousand threes, at least, on a regular basis, daily basis. I'm not strong from NBA three. Every time I've shot from NBA three, I'm airballing it. It would take me probably ten thousand to twenty thousand shots to get used to that shot. Well, I hear you. That's very tough for Sean indeed. But it is the Lakers fast break. Truly appreciate you walking down memory lane for Joe and I and uh, truly appreciate you joining us. Again, we'll try to come back tomorrow with another good show in for you. Joe has no more thoughts before we head on out as usual. So we'll just go ahead and shut it down from here. But again, join us. And if you haven't yet liked and subscribed, please do so to help us out. It really does help out the channel. I know that all the YouTubers say they do, but YouTube tells us it really does help. So please, if you can do it, and if you're doing it already, thank you so much for doing so. If you're on Facebook watching us, like Felix is, big shout out to you, my friend. Then go ahead, please follow us there to get the latest notifications on when we go live on the air. Gerald, you'll be happy uh, Tristan Vucevic is playing for the Wizards. Yeah, you remembered. Yes, when he splashed all that water all over me. Yes. 
And it's interesting to see some of the interesting things to see here in the NBA. Like, for instance, almost half the team on Charlotte is now ex OKC Thunder. Yeah. And that Scotty Pippen Jr. actually has found himself, Joe, as the starting point guard for the Memphis Grizzlies. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Who? Scotty Pippen Jr., the guy who didn't even make our roster or get one of our two ways this season because he just could not shoot the basketball. Of course, we had, you know, we Jalen Huchifino as our budding rookie point guard. Mm. Very nice. Yeah. But, yeah, Scotty Pippen Jr. is even playing minutes, and JHS isn't, and I'll leave it at that. Yeah, Kurt, yeah, but he still can't hit a jumper. Still can't hit a jumper. He's still too small. I don't know how he'll be able to stick in the league. I'm not going to insult Scotty Pippen Jr. at this point. No, no, but I'm just telling you his his attributes, why he didn't make the Lakers team. And obviously he's had a lot of outside. I feel bad for him. I really do. I feel bad for him. I I honestly really. Give a lot of credit to the kid then that he's following and chasing. I hope. I hope. Everything goes right for him. I, I I can't describe how bad I feel for him because of that. It's an embarrassment, and we'll see. I mean, he's getting a showcase now because of all the injuries to Memphis. So mm-hmm. we'll see what happens. By the way, Gigi Jackson, excellent second round draft pick, which the Lakers could have gotten as well. So yeah, another one. <sighs> bad organization do bad things yes once again it is the lakers fast break joe and i will hopefully be on back tomorrow and then of course check out our all of our game stuff as far as the lakers and the gold state warriors saturday night at 5 30 we'll bring it all to you right here of course no better place to go ahead and have your lakers fix than the snack pack from all of us right here at the Lakers Fast Break Podcast.